Perfect. Okay. So um, we're going to talk about IRQ bypass uh, for risk five, which is something I started poking at a little while ago. Uh, apologies for the slides looking a little overdressed. I actually created a slide deck for a different venue a couple months ago, and I just kind of stole stuff from there. But don't worry, the main slide uh, has no color and hard to read. It'll be hard to read as well. So, um, all right. So first, I'll just go through uh, uh, really quickly um, IRQ bypass and also what Risk Five uh, architecture offers with regard to IRQ bypass. And then I've got one slide which we'll speak to for the rest of the time. So, for those of you that um, aren't familiar with it, I've got kind of this family here. We've got no no device assignment at all on the left, and then you have a device assignment where you don't have IRQ bypass. And so here you still have the hypervisor in the middle injecting interrupts on behalf of uh, uh, of the device for the VM. And with IRQ bypass, just as the name implies, we can actually finally take a hypervisor out. So we're bypassing the hypervisor. Um, the nice thing about RISC-V uh, is that it's already tried to consider IRQ bypass in its specifications. So um, when you actually inject an MSI into a, into a, a virtual CPU, uh, it can have a virtual M6. So this is from the AIA spec, which was recently uh, uh, ratified, actually, this, uh, the M6 port. And um, so when you want to inject into a virtual M6, this is actually possible by just writing to um, a guest interrupt file. It can have its own um, address. So these VS file things that I have depicted there in the, in, on each uh, actual M6, these are the, the host level, the hardware M6, uh, these are these uh, special address ranges which were, are going to be used, uh, dedicated to a guest, to a vCPU, which will be able to take these direct writes and, and uh, no hypervisor needed in order to inject the MSI. Um, I've also got some showing there, like when you migrate the vCPU, uh, you're going to actually have to change your VS file. So even if you have a dedicated VS file, you only have it as long as you stay on one CPU, right? So move. Um, and then there's also another concept um, that we ha we have with the MSIC uh, support for virtual CPUs, and that's this MRIF thing. So um, if you don't actually have one of these special guest files available for your vCPU, uh, maybe you've only got, you know, actually you will only have a set number, and you want to swap them between uh, mini vCPUs, um, so you'll actually be a swapping out uh, um, this guest interrupt file actually to a memory resident file or back in again, or maybe you actually you don't have any at all uh, guest interrupt files, so you'll, you'll be using these interrupts. So this is just an in-memory representation, a place where you can write into a bitmap actually for pending interrupts uh, instead of um, directly injecting the MSI. And then the hypervisor will see these writes to, the, to these MREF files and inject interrupts. Uh, to the, uh, to the guest. Now, the IOMMU, uh, which was also uh, V1 spec, was actually also ratified this year, um, also knows how to handle MRIFs. Um, so for, for being able to just write to a guest interrupt file, it's nothing special for an IOMMU, right? You, you have your, your IOVA you know, mapping directly to the uh, MSI guest file, and you can write MSIs directly there by just translating. But with the MRIF, it needs to be aware that the address is going to be writing into an MRIF because now you're not just putting the MSI in the, uh, in the MSI file, but you're writing the bitmap. Uh, and then after you've done that, after you set that pending bit, the IOMMU will actually inject another, uh, well, it'll trigger an interrupt to, to give a notice to the hypervisor. So, hey, you know, we actually wrote this thing into your MRIF, but, you know, of course, it's not going to get delivered to the guest until after... Uh, you do something about it. So that's the notice in the side. All right, so those are the, that was the introduction. So IOMMU supports um, uh, being able to inject MSIs into uh, MRIFs and also, of course, into guest interrupt files. Uh, it has its own MSI table for that, um, for the mappings. And the MSIC knows how to, 
support these guest interrupt files and these interrupts so we can actually uh, have this full connection between um, um, uh, between the remapping in the IMMU and delivery of the MSI to the, to the vCPU. But we have, so these two entities we have, we have the vCPU controller, KVM, hypervisor, and we have the IMMU, the remapping. So these two entities need to somehow communicate and, and of course we don't want to merge these two subsystems together with hackery and, and violate abstractions. So the question is how to do that? Well, um, well VFIO already uh, provides us quite a nice framework, uh, or as Alex said, it's already plumbed. And uh, so as, for, as far as getting um, IRQ bypass configured and, and set up and being able to, uh, to start doing this mapping for DMA, for, uh, particularly you know, uh, also, uh, VFIO does that for us. And so KVM already has that framework in place too. We just have to turn it on for RISC-V, which is pretty easy to do. Um, and then once we have this routing uh, function implemented, we can start trying to, uh, to uh, configure our, our bypass. And so kind of the bridge between these two components, these two subsystems, KVM and the IMMU driver, uh, is best suited by something that speaks IRQ, which would be an IRQ domain. And with an IRQ chip dedicated to IRQ domain that the IMMU instantiates, we can implement uh, IRQ set VCP affinity, which is uh, a function that's provided as well. And we just need to implement that for this particular IMMU uh, design. Um, so like I said, the guest interrupt file is actually pretty easy. Um, if you pass in, um, you know, the GPA and the HPA for for the HPA of the actual guest interrupt file, GPA that the guest wants to use, that it believes that it's uh, S mode um, uh, uh, interrupt file is sitting at, then you just go ahead and allow that mapping in the IMMU and things work. Um, and then the MRF stuff is where things get more complicated. So that structure uh, or, or pair of structures I have on the top of the screen there, I've been iterating on that for a while, trying to decide, you know, this is a protocol that we have to define to be able to, to uh, communicate the information we need from KVM into the IMMU. And I'm not really satisfied with it yet. It, it doesn't matter too much. We can iterate on that even after we, we, we get to some step because it's, you know, it's an inter, uh, internal kernel thing. It's not like we're, we're going to advertise it externally, but whatever. Um, the thing I'm probably least happy with is the bottom arrow. So right now, um, the way I have it set up in the, in the POC is that uh, when you need to use an MRIF, so the hypervisor is telling the MMU driver we're going to use an MRIF, passes in the information it needs, which is described in that structure there above. Um, and then it's just getting this, this MRIF data structure is just getting uh, tapped onto a linked list, which was going to get iterated every time a notification um, MSI gets, gets sent which will be actually handled directly by the IMMU itself. And the reason I have it that way is because this division between what goes and what side, the left IMMU side or the right KVM side is kind of hard with regard to this, this particular MSI notification thing because um, the MSI is, is being triggered by the IMMU. So, you know, it owns this. Um, it knows uh, it can easily set up a handler for it. Um, but the actual action that should be taken is one done by KVM. So currently this, these callbacks get you know, called from the IMU driver telling KVM to go do stuff. And that's already a bit ugly and a bit of a violation of abstraction, I think. Um, to do it, KVM to register the handler for the interrupts that will be generated by the IMMU but KVM doesn't know the virtual interrupt uh, numbers that it will need to register these handlers for. So I don't have this actually figured out yet how we're going to do that. And that's one of the reasons I'm here to ask you guys for advice. Um, and maybe one of you have the answer and I'll just write it down and go home and do it. So, um, anyway, I'll just open it up for people who want to start commenting or suggesting stuff.
No answers. Okay. Um, yeah, go figure it out. Okay. Um, anyway, so if there's any, um, so the other reason I want the KVM to actually handle this um, is because of uh, being able to deliver, being able to find where that uh, MSI notification handler uh, should be. So I actually think it should probably be uh, under KVM. KVM will be able to uh, um, uh, set it to the same physical CPU as the vCPU that it, this MREF is, is dedicated to. Uh, this would have the nice effect that you're not interrupting something else for a vCPU um, uh, for, for work being done on the behalf of some vCPU. And uh, it would actually even probably, or very likely, if that VCPU was running, it's going to actually create a, an exit cycle, uh, and then it's going to get to the interrupt delivered even sooner. Um, so that's another thought. Um, but anyway, so talk. <laughs> Just throw that randomly into the room and see who catches it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah or maybe we've all been shouting for three or four hours or whatever it's been yeah How it's lunchtime i so. i got the perfect timing when yeah. everyone's hungry and already brain dead yeah. <laughs> just thinking about what they're going to eat Um, uh, one week, uh, one is, uh, yeah, the, the reason five have, uh, uh, the AIA is ha have a lot of fails, uh, 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 VS fails and for different VCPU. And, uh, and my question is, uh, uh the, uh, the, uh, the IO MMU is just to, to remembering the, uh, uh, I mean the v, uh, VCPU fails to the address space. That means if a VCPU, if one VCPU schedule out, so, so, uh, so, so the, uh, so if, if somebody want to, if, if some device saw the IO memo to raise up, to, 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 to set the IRQ, VIRQ, it would raise up a page fault or access fault, or maybe some, Spatial trap. So it depends on. Um, so I mean, all the mappings in the IMMU are going to be device specific, right? They're part of that device context only. So if, um, you won't have any sort of like uh, mapping where you're going to go off into nowhere because you just actually won't go there at all. Yeah. Uh, if that if none of the VCPs that are currently scheduled are going to be using that. Um, but uh, so if you if you have a like, multiple VCPs for one VM where that de device is been assigned, uh, then they should all end up with the same mappings eventually, right? So, uh, because when you when you launch the guest, then you set these affinity. So, um, if it's if it's if you need to move the IRQ, you need to migrate because you've actually um, decided that uh, this VCP is not going to run, and that one will. Um, then, yeah. Then that's when. Right, go ahead. Asking about the case where a vCPU doesn't have a guest interrupt file allocated to it because like you have more vCPUs where it's scheduled out or something like that. That's what the memory resident interrupt files are for. So it can just write the pending interrupt to memory and then the IOMU just notifies the hypervisor that it needs to go schedule out that, that vCPU. I think, is that the, the scenario you're talking about? Uh, uh, when we when 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 the device uh, write the write the that field that VS field and uh, it it's called uh, raise up a different kind of fault page fault. If the page fault, we just think about a normal IOM we write page fault. But for the uh, for the for the uh, IRQ IRQ uh, scenario, uh, maybe we can use another. Uh, for a trap to to determine 
this specific usage. That will maybe that means if we reuse the right page fault, that would go into a, a complex path, and then you need to to determine that. And if we give a specific one, maybe would improve the uh, uh, pace of the. Uh, IRQ of the remand the IRQ. The, uh, and, and, and I, I, another thing I, I mentioned this question is I want to compare the uh, such as the ARM previous implementation they just used the vCPU interface and they didn't use this, our AIA so many uh, VS fail mapping because that's serious and for the hardware it's a little bit bring some PTW into the interrupt, uh, into the AIA, into the interrupt stuffs. Uh, actually, in ARM have a simple implementation that's a, a vCPU in the face. So, but that, uh, but uh, the, but uh, the, the, the advantage of the uh, AIA is it could uh, decrease some context switch because the, 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 the because the, the mapping is there. So if you change, if you want to change the mapping, you just change it, you know, such as the uh, SATP uh, root page, p similar like the page table. Uh, so uh, these two kind of mechanisms, how do you compare them? I mean, the traditional vCPU interface or AIA, this page work based uh, uh, IRQ me mechanism. So you, yeah, so if, I don't think I completely understand the question on what I'm trying to compare, but um, I think, so you, you want to know about the, uh, the difference between knowing that you've hit this MSI uh, page fault versus a normal DMA or, or versus a different type of MSI or? Yeah, I think uh, uh, for this AIA implementation, we have a simple one. Previous mm -hmm. such as the uh, ARM uh, vCPU interface, that's simple. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. What do you mean by simple? Like we are talking about the AI spec, which has the VS file. So if the vCPU schedule any uh, writes to the VS file directly gets, and then vCPU gets the interrupt. If vCPU is not scheduled, either MRA or the software file gets kicked in, and then the interrupt bits will be stored there. And then whenever the next vCPU uh, gets trying to like vCPU load, you check whether the pending interrupt bit, and then it will schedule that. But uh, I don't understand what do you mean by simple interface. Like I'm uh, gig I'm we have a uh, I'm have VCPU interface that didn't didn't like this his hardware is that is like ours ours he just he just uh, put a VCPU interface and no many you you need to prepare the many uh, fails mapping fails VS fails there there's no in their design and uh, and. Uh, and the, the, this, this advantage of that design is you must uh, switch context uh, uh, more than the AI. The the memory wrap mapped interrupt file, the memory resident interrupt files already provide the interface to do that on AI. So like you you could theoretically just have one guest interrupt file and in software switch back and forth between a bunch of memory resident interrupt files. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the MRIF interface allows you to do the same thing on RISC V that you would be doing on the, the manual context switching in software that you would be doing on ARM. So it, 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 all the, the functionality determined that this is an MSI write and do special things with it is, is already implemented in the RISC V IOMME spec. It's a, special P, it's a special table for MSIs with special PTE format, so it knows when you're, when you're doing an MSI translation. Um, but anyway, I, I would, I'll talk to you later. Uh, You've got one question. To make sure I understand. From Jacob Pan. He wants to know if the IOMU stores the host physical address of the MRIF. IOMU stores the host physical address of the MRIF. MRIF. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. That's specified. So it, it knows exactly where it's going to write to that bitmap. Yeah. Yeah. So so, see you guys. You can take one if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>